Okay, so I want to talk about something that we're all passionate about, our beliefs. Specifically, how can we swap out our existing beliefs for different, better beliefs at will? Easier said than done, of course. We all know what happened to Indy when he made that particular swap. So I want to talk about this guy, John Law, who in the year of our Lord, 1705, um, was the son of a Scottish banker. He's an inveterate gambler, convicted of murder after, uh, after dueling over a woman. But he's also his heir's most radical thinker on the subject of money. After escaping from prison, he runs around Europe trying to pitch this crazy new financial system to every monarch that will have him. And he finds a taker in, in Henry the, uh, Louis XV, whose father had drained the, the country of its gold. Uh, so here's his big scheme. Um, he has the king create a national paper money, which is a fantastical new idea. There's no need for all that gold. So then he makes it law, he, does the king make it law that all taxes will be paid in this new money? So the second thing he does, he, he actually creates a state-sponsored company, the Mississippi Company. You see, there's a whole new world out there waiting to be exploited. So with freshly printed bills in everybody's hands, the stock prices go through the roof. And John Law is his heir as Mark Zuckerberg. So by, by all accounts, this was the first stock market bubble, and it collapses spectacularly. It takes generations to recover. But John Law has shown us how to conjure an economy out of thin air by understanding how malleable people's beliefs actually are. So if we jump forward to 1994, it's Brazil. They've been dealing with decades of hyperinflation. So eggs that cost one crucero uh, one month are two crucero the next. It's crazy. The government tries everything and nothing works. Um, but here's what does work, and it's kind of amazing. Brazil creates a virtual currency called the unit of real value. And they have uh, shopkeepers put all their prices in this unit of real value. And it's 100% stable and 100% fake. Until one day, and here's the trick, the government actually ships in new bills that are called reals, okay? And they get rid of the old money, and overnight, inflation vanishes. Money is, people stop believing that money is going to be worth less tomorrow than it is today. So we return to the original question. How can we consciously change our beliefs to something we don't already believe? The Brazilians believed that inflation would continue, and so it did. But they aimed for something better, that would, they aimed for something that would serve them better. So here's my central observation. We will our beliefs into existence. We aren't computers that simply weigh the merits of arguments. Perhaps the only way to change our beliefs is to build on the desires that lead us to them. Of course, this can cut both ways. A few years back, I had a year and a half long debate with a creationist. I tried to convince him about the merits of Darwinism, and he tried to convince me that evolution was just another faith system. But I began to understand why he, we'd, I'd never be able to persuade him when he explained that he thought it was metaphysical folly, to his, use his words, to believe that it all comes down to random chance. To him, believing in evolution was the equivalent to believing that there is no meaning to life. And given the choice, who would choose to believe that? In the spring of 2007, I attended one of the early Obama rallies in Oakland, and you could hear murmurings everywhere. Uh, people were asking, do you really believe that this country is ready for a black president? It seems kind of a ridiculous question today, but if you remember, there was no evidence at all for that in 2007. We wanted to believe it, so we did, and then everybody did. This same dynamic is true for depression sufferers who learn all kinds of destructive thoughts about themselves. I suck. Uh, I, knew, uh, I know what they're thinking. It's, not, it's my fault. For a depressive, the answer for them is to actually disbelieve their own beliefs. And they know that. And one of my friends solved this problem. Oh, another PowerPoint conversion problem. Um, he actually created an app for that. He listed all the, uh, the ideas he knew were distortions. And... Um, <laughs> his app actually got him to think differently about his problems. So it's by recognizing these distortions that we know what beliefs to hack. Um, and if we follow behavioral economics, that gives us some clues. Um, when, we, when we look at the problems today, we see that money is at the root. That's why I'm so interested in how we've hacked money uh, over the years. Um, and it turns out that well, not so long ago, money, what money is, what we believed about money was um, a hugely controversial thing. Um, in fact, Andrew Jackson abolished the National uh, Bank way back in the first part of the 19th century. So this is our opportunity to start looking at our own problems 
and figuring out what we need to do to hack the, uh, what kind of beliefs we need to hack to fix it. Yeah, <laughs> there we go.